everyone. Hope you're all okay and keeping yourselves busy, but more importantly than that, safe. Well, it's been a while since we've all seen each other, so the staff of William Barcroft decided to read you all a story. And what better story than the world's worst teachers? Although we're not talking about us. A big thank you, though, to David Williams for allowing us to read this to you. Right, I'll leave you now to enjoy the story, and I'll catch you a bit later. Mr Pence Balls Once upon a time's table, there was a maths teacher named Mr Pent. He certainly looked like a textbook maths teacher, with his wire-rimmed glasses, brown suit and comb-over. However, Mr Pent was anything but your average maths teacher. Oh no, he was one of the world's very worst teachers. That was because Mr Pent's every waking moment was taken up with one dark obsession. Balls. He had a deep loathing of them. But where did this strange fixation with spherical objects come from? Our story begins when Mr Pent was still a child. It is easy to forget that teachers were once children. But in most cases, they were. Some babies you knew immediately were destined to be teachers because they were born with a teacherly scowl of disapproval on their face. As soon as he was put in his cot, Baby Pent was counting the beads above his head. Soon he was writing complex mathematical equations on the wall with his alphabetty spaghetti. It was when, as a toddler, he began giving his parents algebra homework that they knew for sure that their little boy was destined to be a maths teacher. One day, when Master Pent was just 10 years old, he suffered a terrible accident. The boy was struck on the head by a ball. Not just any ball. A demolition ball. As balls go, this has to be one of the biggest and heaviest there is. After all, it is made of steel and swung from a crane to destroy buildings. Bish, bash, bosh. Being a child whose fate it was to become a maths teacher, it will not surprise you to learn that Master Pent had no time for toys or games or anything that might be considered fun. No. This mathematics-loving child filled his days with times tables, prime numbers, fractions, quadratic equations, trigonometry, and for most of us normal folk, the absolutely dreaded long division. One rainy afternoon, Master Pent was on his way home from school. Maths Club was the world's most boring after-school club. Master Pent was, in fact, the only member. Other strong contenders for the world's most boring after-school club are Punctuation Club, the Standing in a Puddle Society, Basket Weaving for Beginners, Train Spotters Anonymous, the Sitting in the Dark Society, Staring at a Blank Wall Club, the Traffic Cone Appreciation Society, or Latin Latin. Latin. In Maths Club, Mr Pent has just been learning all about Pi, also known as or 3.14. Pi is even more boring than it sounds, and it sounds cataclysmically boring. It is a mathematical constant, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter I confess I had to look that bit up. I spent all my time in maths, dreaming about cake. Are you asleep yet? <sighs> if so, then good night. If not, read on. When Master Pent spotted a huge steel ball, he was eager to put it to the test this whole circumference diameter nonsense. As he fumbled in his pencil case for his ruler, he failed to see that this huge steel ball was, in fact, swinging straight towards him at speed. Whoosh! It was meant to destroy an old block of flats that was standing right behind him. Instead, it struck the boy on the head. Hard. Really hard. Clunk! Master Pent was knocked out cold. That was just as well, as the ball battered him into the air. Whizz! He flew, interestingly enough, exactly 3.14 miles before smashing through the roof of a shed in a back garden. Smash, crunch, duff. Mr Pent didn't wake up for a whole week later. 
He discovered he was in hospital with an incredibly sore bandaged head. Ouch, he yelped, my head hurts. The boy had to keep the bandage on for six whole months and looked as if he were wearing a nappy on his head. Ha ha, nappy boy, laughed the other kids. Harumph, he harumphed. Ever since that fateful day of the accident, Pent detested balls of any kind. The sight of anything round was enough to bring back terrible memories of that great steel ball. Clonk! So when he grew up and became a maths teacher, Mr Pent was dismayed to find that at St Orb's school, where he taught, there were balls. Balls and more balls, each one reminding him of the worst day of his life. Balls here, balls there, balls everywhere. In the playground, footballs, tennis balls and even ping pong balls would bounce at him from every angle. Boing, boing, boing. On spotting one, his eyes would all but pop out of their sockets. His face would go a shade of purple. His glasses would steam up and his comb over would stick up on ends. Balls! Mr Pent would shout as he foamed at the mouth. The teacher's hatred was so great that he stuck warning signs up all over St Orbs. On every wall, door and window. No balls allowed in the playground. No balls whatsoever within a hundred mile radius of the school. This rule was hard to enforce, even if, being a maths teacher, he knew exactly what that 100 mile radius covered on a map, using his compass and ruler, of course. He even stuck one to the dinner lady's bottom. Mr Pent would confiscate all balls on the spot. Then he would lock them up in his special ball cupboard at the end of a long corridor next to his classroom. The sign read, ball cupboard, beware contains balls. Over the years, Mr Pent stuffed hundreds and hundreds of balls of all sizes in there and there was hardly any room for more. If any pupil dared to ask him, please can I have my ball back sir? The teacher would smirk to himself before replying, of course child. Thank you sir. Just one moment if you please. Then he would reach into the cupboard for the ball and pop it with a pair of compasses he had concealed in his hand. Poof! The air would spurt out like a lazy bottom burp. One of those bottom burps that is in no hurry to leave. It seeps out over a period of seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months and in extreme cases, even years. These ones are hard to blame on other people. Short, sharp ones have an element of surprise and a dirty look at someone close by is enough to deflect the blame. So a close friend informs me. <laughs> there you are, Mr Pent would say as he handed the deflated ball back to the child with a grin. After he'd finally confiscated every single last ball from every child in school, Mr Pent went further. Now, any spherical object was on the hit list. The teacher stalked up and down the school, confiscating everything that was round. Marbles. Balls! These are mine! A space hopper from under a pupil. Boing! A gobstopper from the mouth of the gardener. Balls! Spit that out! The globe from the geography classroom. Balls! Balls are forbidden on school premises! A suspicious looking pea from the dining hall. Balls! That pea could have an eye out. A string of pearls from round the neck of the headmistress, Mrs Stead. Balls. Headmistress, balls. You of all people should know better. Balls. 
It was a confiscation cavalcade. Pent was on a roll, which was odd for someone who hated anything that rolled. Things came to a head the day a boy named Roland, who happened to have a rather round head, faced the full force of Pent's fury. Balls! The globular shape of your head is in contravention of school rules. But sir, protested Roland, it's not my fault that my head is round. I was born this way. No buts, boy. You and your head are confiscated. With that, Pent picked up the boy and marched off down the school corridor before stuffing him into the cupboard. Squish. Squash. Squish. Bolt. Knock, knock. Knock. Let me out, cried the boy. Please, I have exams. Not until your head changes to a squarer shape. Balls. Needless to say, this was the tipping point for the pupils at St Orbs. With their friend Roland still stuck in the cupboard, they were now furious with Mr Pent. It was impossible to live under his tyranny a day longer. The most rebellious of all pupils was a girl named, as luck would have it, Rebel. Rebel, who lived up to her name with her individual take on school uniform. Hair scrunchies, skinny tie, short blazer, pop group badges, graffiti on her school bag, puffy skirt, colourful socks and chunky shoes. She decided to hold a secret meeting of all the kids at the school. No teachers allowed. During a lesson, Rebel whispered in her best friend's ear, Everyone meet after school in the park. Pass it on. This was passed from one child to another. Soon the message became mangled. Park meet in the school after everyone. Meet after the park. Everyone in school. School everyone in the meet. Park after. However, as soon as the bell rang for the end of school, ding a ling 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 a rushing river of children ran to the park. Rebel climbed to the top of the climbing frame to address her fellow pupils. The girl was a natural rabble rouser and spoke with an urgent energy that inspired all who heard her. Have you had enough of Mr. Pent confiscating all our balls, she cried. Yeah. Yes, cheered the crowd. Do you want to rescue Roland from the ball cupboard? Yeah. Yes. Do we all need to get our own back on Mr. Pent? Yeah. Yes. Are you with me? Yeah. Yes. Rebel expounded her plan. It was quite brilliant, but would only work if every single kid in St. Orbs played their part and they would need to play it to perfection. That afternoon, all the kids left the park, excited about what tomorrow would bring. The bell rang for lunch break the next day. As the kids streamed out of the school building into the playground, Mr. Pent was on the prowl as always. Balls! 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 He muttered to himself, his eyes darting around to spot one. On Rebel's signal, it was time for the pupils to begin phase one of their plan. A group of kids began playing football. Another group started playing cricket. Still, more played hockey, tennis, bowls, ping pong and even snooker. Any game you can think of that involved a ball, they played it as noisy and boisterously as they could. 
go! Game, set, match. Pass me the ball. Except there were no balls. Not one. The hundreds of kids were all taking part in a ginormous trick. Every single one of them was miming. Of course, Mr. Pent knew absolutely nothing about this scheme. How could he? The teacher could see all the kids running after a ball, kicking a ball, bowling a ball, hitting a ball, potting a ball. The thing was, he couldn't see a single ball. Mr. Pent exploded like an angry volcano. His face went fiery red. Steam came out of his ears. His eyes boiled in his head. Balls, 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 balls! He kept shouting over and over again before he managed to bellow. What is the meaning of this? What's the meaning of what, sir? Asked Rebel innocently as she sidled up to him. The entire school. He's playing with... He could barely bring himself to say the B word. Balls! I know, Mr. Pencer, it is absolutely terrible that everyone would disregard your rules. I know, I know, I know. Can they not read the sign? There, 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 there. The teacher began manically pointing to the hundreds of signs he'd put up over the playground. No balls! Balls are forbidden. How many times do you need to be told absolutely no balls? Maybe you need to put more signs up, sir, suggested Rebel with a smirk. No, 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 he thundered. These nasty little wretches have seen my signs. It's just that today I can't spot a single ball. Balls! You what, sir? Rebel did her best look of incredulity. Where are the balls? You mean to say you can't see any? She asked, mock innocently. No, he boomed. That is very strange because there are balls absolutely everywhere, sir. Balls? Where? He demanded. Look, sir, there's one, she said, pointing at nothing. Pence piercing eyes followed her finger. I can't see any balls. And another, and another, and another. Balls, balls, balls. Where? 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 There, 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 she replied. The balls are just going so fast that they're a bit of a blur. If you chase after them, I'm sure you will catch one. Mr. Pent passed his leather briefcase to the girl and took a deep breath. Hold this, he ordered. With pleasure, sir. The teacher then began charging around the playground bellowing. Two nil, Cal called out one kid. Out, shouted another. Strike, yelled a third. He went left, he went right, he went forward, he went backwards. He spun around and round in circles, even leapt in the air to intercept an imaginary ball. Huh! Then slid to the ground and stopped another from rolling. Oof! He leapt onto his ping pong table to stop a third. Da! The table couldn't take his weight. It broke. Crunch! and tumbled to the ground, taking Mr. Pent with it. Now he was rolling around on the ground. Balls, 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 balls. He began muttering to himself over and over as if it had gone bananas. Balls, 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 balls. The bell rang for the end of lunchtime. Ring a little ling, trying definitely desperately to stiffen their giggles. Tee -hee -hee -hee. All the kids began packing up their imaginary balls before dashing off to their lessons. Goodbye, sir, called out Rebel. I hope you find your balls. This caused fits of giggles from the kids. Ha 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 ha. Balls, 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 balls. And he carried on muttering. A window opened at the top of the school building and Mrs. Stay poked her head out and shouted, Pent! Yes, balls. I mean, headmistress. I don't pay you good money to lie on the ground. Up, man, up. Mr. Pent scrambled to his feet. I'm so sorry, headmistress. Balls! I should hope so. Now off you go to your lesson at once and stop saying balls. Balls, I mean, yes, balls. 
all the kids pressed their faces up against the windows and they were looking on with wide-eyed delight. It was time for phase two of their plan. As a still dizzy Mr Pennell wobbled through the empty playing ground, the rebel gave the order, now! <laughs> From out of the windows of the school building, all the kids started throwing balls they'd secretly smuggled into school that morning. Footballs, basketballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls, softballs and every type of ball you could imagine landed in the playground. Boing! 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 They bounced all around Mr Pent and some even bobbed off his head. Boink! Balls! He bellowed. Mr Pent thought he might be seeing things as he reached out to grab them. Balls! 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 He caught some in his hands but there were far too many for him to hold. With a look of glee on his face, he began stuffing the balls about his person. Footballs were squeezed down his trousers, tennis balls up his jumper, cricket balls under his arms, a basketball under his chin and a dozen ping pong balls in his mouth. Looking as if he'd been inflated, Mr Pent waddled across the playground. Balls, 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 he kept repeating to himself as he hurried into the school building. The teacher, of course, heading to his special cupboard where he kept all the confiscated balls under lock and key. The cupboard was already jam-packed with balls and poor round beaded Roland, who was still stuffed in there. Rat-a-tat-tat! Help! Let me out! It's been two days now and all I've had to eat is a mouldy old tennis ball! cried the boy. Mr Pent fumbled for his keys and opened the door. Oh, thank goodness, explained Roland. You are letting me out. No, snapped Pent. I'm putting more in. Balls. Just managing to hold Roland at the wall of balls back, Pent stuffed more and more in. Balls, 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 balls. Now the cupboard was full to burst in. As the kids popped their heads around the classroom doors to watch, Mr. Pemp put his back up against the door to close it. It took all his might. <sighs> when he finally managed to close the door and lock them in, the teacher smiled gleefully. Balls, he said to himself. Then, all of a sudden, the cupboard strained with the pressure. Creak! Sir? Called out Rebel from the doorway. Balls! I, I mean, what? Just one more, sir. With that, she rolled a giant beach ball towards him. Trundle. Eagerly, Mr. Pent pounced on it. Balls! Got you! He then unlocked the cupboard door so he could imprison this last one like all the others. This would prove to be a mistake. As soon as he unlocked the door, thousands of balls and Roland burst out. Boom! They tumbled down the corridor. Boing, boing, boing. It was a tidal wave of balls. Mr. Penn was swept off his feet. The kids closed the classroom doors and watched through the glass as their teacher was carried along the corridor. Roland managed to leap on top of some lockers. Thud. He was safe. Hooray! shouted all the kids. It's been two days and I really need the loo, said the boy as his teacher whooshed past him. Whoosh! Balls! screamed Pent. The balls washed him down the stairs, through the doors and out into the playground. Help! screamed Pent. The whole school looked on from the main building, but there was nothing they could do. Balls! Oh, Mr Pent as he was swept out through the school gates. He rolled down the road and all the way out of town. The balls rolled into the distance, taking Mr. Pent with them. The maths teacher was never seen again. From that day on, the pupils at St. Orbs were happy that they could play ball games every day they liked. But they also felt sad. Why? Because they really missed winding up their teacher. After all, why else do you go to school? I hope you all enjoyed that, everyone. Uh, make sure you keep reading, make sure you keep having lots of fun with stories like this. We're all really missing you. We can't wait to get back to school and see you all again. Hopefully it won't be too long. Okay, take care. Keep smiling. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.